Hello everyone, it's Paula and you're in my Las Vegas kitchen. First time in 2024, Happy New Year. We are going to do something special today to tie in with last Sunday's Las Vegas Inside and Out video. We featured New York, New York, so why not stick with New York for this particular episode? We are going to make real, authentic New York cheesecake. And the recipe came from a gift, actually, a wonderful cookbook that was a gift from our friends Jay and Joey who live in New York City. These guys are wonderful. And this cookbook is called The Desserts of New York. So not only do you get the recipes, but all kinds of vintage photos. The author is really chatty about all the things she loves about New York, about the history of these things. And I love this recipe because it has a Las Vegas tie-in, in fact, two of them. Within the past couple of months, two of the restaurants that she notes are the make the best cheesecake in New York are in Las Vegas now. We have the Peter Luger Steakhouse over at Caesars. We have Junior's over at Resorts World, and they make some of the best cheesecake ever. Well, I'm gonna try to copy it, so cross your fingers on this. But first, let's take a look at the wardrobe for today. This also was a gift from Jay and Joey. It is all about Broadway and New York. And it also has a Vegas tie-in because how many of these have residencies on the strip? The Phantom, Jersey Boys, Hairspray. So I love that these two cities just run hand in hand. This is a lot of fun. All right. Let's talk ingredients for our real New York cheesecake. There are not a lot of them. So the base or the crust is going to be made of the classic graham crackers. We're going to use an interesting sugar called organic cane sugar and some butter. Of course, just the classics on that. The filling is going to be cream cheese, cream cheese, almost two and a half pounds of cream cheese. We're going to use some super fine sugar, some heavy whipping cream, eggs and vanilla in that. And then the topping is going to be very simple whipped cream made with yet another sugar. We're gonna do the whipped cream, the powdered sugar and more vanilla. So I have to tell you, I had to buy a bunch of these things. I've never had these sugars in the house before. So it was interesting doing the shopping for this and the prep as well. Speaking of prep, let's go. Let's make cheesecake. Let's talk prep. I did a whole bunch of stuff ahead of time to make this run smoothly. <laughs> First of all, I have a nine inch springform pan that I have wrapped in foil so that the batter doesn't leak out. And I've also greased the inside and put a little circle of parchment paper in there. So my baking pan is all ready. I have also uh, preheated my oven to 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 uh, Celsius. So now I have 200 grams of, and I did use my little scale, I tried to be very, very precise, uh, 200 grams of graham crackers that I just crushed. And then I also have, I think that's a 75 grams of golden castor sugar or organic cane sugar. I couldn't find the castor, but I did find the cane. So I'm gonna put that in. You know, I, I've always said this, but I actually love the discovery aspect using new uh, ingredients that I've never used before. So stir the sugar and the graham crackers together, and then we're going to cement them for the uh, crust with 125 grams of melted unsalted butter. So that's over here, I've got that handy. Let me just stir that in to my graham crackers. So I'm gonna, full disclosure, the recipe uh, as written calls for using a food processor multiple times. I do not have nor have ever had a food processor, but if I look on the Junior's website, they use a mixer and I use a mixer too to make cheesecake. So I think it's gonna be just fine using my mixer rather than a food processor. Um, I'll print the recipe as written and you can do it however you want to. So once I stir this together, I'm just gonna pull over my springform pan and I'm gonna press this into the bottom. I poured the crust mixture into the springform pan with instructions to press it down firmly. I grabbed a sturdy rocks glass 
a gift from our pal Tanner in Montana meant for sipping whiskey, and that turned out to be the perfect tool for the job. Okay, I've pulled out my stand mixer and assembled the first set of ingredients for the filling. A cup and a half of heavy whipping cream, four eggs, 220 grams of superfine sugar, and the recipe calls for natural vanilla. I searched carefully for a label that said natural just in case McCormick's isn't natural. I need a tablespoon of that. Those four items go into the mixer and get combined for a couple of minutes at medium speed. Meanwhile, let me tell you about our new Peter Luger Steakhouse. Late last year, the legendary restaurant that's been serving unmatched steaks in Brooklyn since, get this, 1887, opened its doors right here at Caesars Palace. This is its first U.S. location outside of New York City, and although they've kept many elements of the original, including menu favorites, this is a newly designed 8,700 square foot space. It features an octagonal shaped dining room, a stunning bar, and room for 300 carnivores. According to our cookbook author Yasmin, their New York cheesecake ranks at the top of the list. All right, that's nice and frothy. Next up, we have, I wanna show you this in, in the overhead, one kilogram or two pounds, three ounces of cream cheese chopped and softened. Look at this bowl of cream cheese. I've never made a cheesecake that called for almost five bricks of Philadelphia cream cheese. Anyway, here we go. I'm gonna do that. And while I'm making this, let me tell you a little bit about Junior's. Ask a New York City local, or better yet, a cabbie, whose cheesecake is the best in town, and they are likely to say Junior's. This family-style restaurant also got its start in Brooklyn back in 1950, and it too just recently headed west and hung up a shingle on the Las Vegas Strip. Junior's is now at Resorts World, a 300-seat venue offering full-service breakfast, lunch, dinner, late night, and their legendary cheesecake in a whopping two dozen flavors. All right, so Junior says that they mix their cheesecake for 40 minutes. I'm not gonna go quite that long, but it's looking nice and smooth. So the next step is I have 80 grams of the unsalted butter that I melted and cooled, and with the motor running, I'm gonna drizzle in the butter. Minimal mixing on that step just until combined. And I want you to look at this velvety filling. Oh my gosh, let's not count calories. Let's not talk about cholesterol. This is unbelievable. Is it gonna fit in my spring form pan? I hope so. Look at this. Cameraman Dale was just over here. He said, are you sure that's gonna fit in the pan? I'm hoping so. Let's do this. <laughs> it is incredibly heavy. So let me just drop this in. So what we're gonna do here is pour this in and then we're going to gently tap it to remove any air bubbles. Although I honestly don't see any air bubbles in this. Oh, it's gonna fit. It's gonna be a tall, traditional New York cheesecake. None of those flat little square things. This is going to be great. All right, you know me, I gotta turn it around. <laughs> I did my best. Good enough. 
All right, let's just spread this beautiful thing in the pan. That's fabulous. All right, now I'm gonna do one of two taps. So I tap it for air bubbles, then I'm just gonna let it sit here on the counter for one minute, and I'm gonna tap it again. So here's number one. Not a lot happened. All right, I'm gonna do it one more time, and in the oven it goes 45 to 50 minutes. All right, friends, I ended up going 50 minutes on this just to make sure it's done, and I'm so proud of myself because it didn't crack. That's one of the successful uh, moves for this cheesecake. So when you pull it out and you move it, it's supposed to jiggle a little bit. I'd call that a jiggle. So, so far, I think we're doing good. Now, this has to cool completely in the pan on the counter, and then it goes in the refrigerator minimum four hours or overnight. In our case, we're going to go overnight. I'm going to make some whipped cream according to the recipe, and we are going to taste this baby. So, through the magic of video, you won't have to wait till tomorrow. We'll see you very soon. Hi there friends, it is the next day and I've got me a cameraman Dale here to do some taste testing. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> so let me bring you up to date on what has happened in your absence. First of all, when we cut this cheesecake and we'll show you a close up in the camera, it's not quite set in the middle. So I'm definitely gonna put in the description box that you should cook it longer than 50 minutes. Uh, the cookbook author didn't tell us like how to test except for that jiggle test. So, uh, but what I, my, my observation was that we are not at sea level like New York is. We're about 2000 feet up. Which I think is an amazing observation. Yeah. I should have thought of that. Yeah. So I think altitude, because this is such a delicate cake, maybe altitude matters, but I wish I would have cooked it 10 or 15 yeah. minutes longer. Right. Anyway, I'm gonna try it. it looks beautiful. I made a fresh whipped cream just 10 minutes ago using two cups of the whipping cream, 35 grams of confectioner sugar, one teaspoon of vanilla, and the whisk attachment on my mixer, and it's beautiful. It is. Have can a I, bite. Can I go for it now? Yes, please do. Right. Am I making you wait too long? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the trick is pick up a little piece of whipped cream, pick up some filling, pick up some oh, crust. That is really good. Very cream. Oh, that whipped cream is amazing. And the the um, graham cracker uh, oh, crust on the bottom. That's that a graham cracker that's, crust. That's a killer right there. <laughs> All right, this is a wonderful cheesecake. Yeah, mm. I really like it a lot. So another update. I went to Junior's this morning and spent ten bucks and a piece of cheesecake. It kind of got damaged on the way home. Got Resorts crumpled. World is a bit of a ways away. So let's give but it a we shot. wanted to do a comparison taste test. So Go. Should I try it? Yeah, let's try it. All right, so this is... This is Junior's, Junior's famous cheesecake from New York City. Not bad. I'll tell you what. I like yours a lot better. It's tart. It is. I this like, is much sweeter. Oh yeah, much sweeter. Um, and you know what? You have I, I a much thicker uh, uh, crust on the bottom. Yeah, I knew that when I was making this crust, that it yeah. was super thick, and that is not the best cheesecake I ever ate by far. Hmm. No, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It, it's really got a tartness to it, whereas this is creamy and sweet. I have to now have another bite of my little creation. Yeah, this is really, really good. Really good. I really think 15 more minutes and I think it would have nailed it as far as the, uh, it's actually, it's hard. It's hard all the way on the top. It's just got a little bit of mush to it to, towards the bottom. Toward, yeah, but it doesn't affect the flavor at all. Mm. That is a wonderful cheesecake, super rich, the best of ingredients, but worth it. The outcome is delicious. Absolutely, I love it. All right, friends, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us on the first episode of Paula's Kitchen in 2024 from Las Vegas. We will be doing more throughout the year. I have recipes galore and cookbooks galore from you, and we're gonna be featuring a lot of those throughout the year. Don't forget to check out our other site too.
Las that Vegas would be inside and Las out. Las Vegas inside and out. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Write a comment. I love hearing from you. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Have a great day.